So today's webinar is designed to equip you with everything that you need to know about this module, including the background information, along with a demo of the module, so that you're oriented with the content and given tips and best practices on how to deliver the module with confidence. So with that said, let's begin with a brief introduction. So in Purpose and Power of Emotions, participants explore different types of emotions and learn about the purpose behind them, whether they are easy to feel or difficult to feel. By exploring the purpose behind emotions, participants gain new perspectives on difficult feelings and explore how the positive impacts they can have on their lives. Participants will also build self-awareness by naming and recognizing emotions within themselves and their bodies, and they'll practice recognizing emotions in other people. The participants will be engaging in certain goals, including um, reflecting on what they feel most proud of and how they feel when doing so. They identify no emotions by naming them and learning what each emotion means to them. They'll learn about negative emotions and how they can be purposeful in situations. So sort of restructuring perspectives around ne negative emotions. And they also become more aware of how emotions feel in the body. The purpose is for participants to learn the reasons behind why we feel the way we do and to learn how to restructure perspectives on difficult emotions and how they can be potentially helpful in one's daily life. The skills that participants will use are emotional awareness, they'll foster self-empathy and compassion, they'll recognize destructive and harmful thoughts, they will do some cognitive restructuring and they'll also engage in some mindful approaches. I have the list of topics here, but I will be going over them in the demo so we can go ahead and skip on to the key elements. And um, key elements are great. So we use in all of our hub modules, the following key elements in our curriculum design. So we go through information, dialogue prompts, interactive activities, mindfulness exercises, journals, quotes, and resources. So the modules are jam packed with so much information in a digestible amount of time. Um, and the best way to sort of highlight this is to uh, make our way over to the hub platform so I can show you what it looks like. So from the platform dashboard here, we have our learning type section and we're going to select the youth learning portal. And you'll see here that we have two options. Um, if you are working with a client who is in a youth justice environment, then you can select this pathway, but otherwise you can select the community pathway. And this is a method in which we're able to collect more formal data on the hub usage. So it's important you select the pathway that applies best to your client. Great, so now we're at our theme selection. And for this module, we're gonna go into our peace and justice theme. And while we're here, I do just wanna highlight that we have a theme guide. It's located in the center here. So if we click on the icon, we're given, um, it's such a wonderful document. Um, we have these theme guides that are essentially an evidence-informed research paper that gives you some background information and statistics in that specific area of prevention. And in this case, we have our Peace and Justice theme guide that gives you some excellent context into the demographics that you may be working with. Um, I really like how we go into detail on the impact that this theme might have on the demographic you're working with, like um, emotional regulation, behavioral responses, interpersonal communication. So it's a really great document. Um, we do have one for every theme. So I recommend that you go through this document before diving into the modules. And then here in our modules tab, 
we're going to select the anger management and emotional resilience uh, in the table of contents. And then you can see that all of our modules are located on a module card, which gives you a little synopsis of the module, as well as access to the digital resources for that module. So we'll go over those together. So for our uh, purpose and power of emotions, we'll navigate to the facilitator guide. And essentially the facilitator guide is a PDF that's detail oriented and focuses on the module that you're about to deliver. So here you have the information that I went over a moment ago, just some background on why we uh, chose to do this module in this area and what the participant is going to get out of their experience, whether it's the goals, the topics, the skills that they're going to be learning. And then we do go over those key elements in detail. And this just gives you an idea of um, the main elements that make hub modules what they are. So um, basically what you can expect to see um, as a facilitator. And then the best part of the facilitator guide is the script. And the script allows you to follow along with what the participants are seeing on their screens. The guide is, um, you can really easily print off the guide or you can save it to your device so that you have a copy as well. Um, but you're given instructions on what to do on each page, whether it is, um, you know, engaging the participants in an activity or engaging them in a discussion. And you're given everything that you possibly uh, need to share. So it's in, in a sense, a foolproof way to deliver a module. So I also recommend going through the guide um, before actually working through with your clients, just so you can get a better idea of um, the experience that they're supposed to have. And I'm just gonna navigate to the um, last page of the facilitator guide here. We do include some additional resources that might be useful for you to navigate to if you would like to learn um, more information about the topic. Great, so now that we've gone through the guide, let's take over the journal. So you also have access to these um, on the module card and the journals are for the participants and every participant should have a copy of the journal before starting with the module. Um, if you're working with participants in person, you can very easily print off a copy for them to have physically. But of course, in the digital age and with COVID, a lot of our facilitators are doing everything through Zoom or go to webinar, whatever your medium is, you can save the document to your device and then um, send it over to the participants and they can just type in their answers. Great, so essentially uh, the journals are where participants will be writing their answers to the reflection questions that are shown throughout the module. And in addition, we include some wonderful activities and visuals. We always include a quote as well as a take-home practice. Um, I will go through the take-home practice in detail through the demo. And we also have a section here for resources that relate to the topic that will be good for the participant to have. So since this is their personal journal and they will have a copy of it, after the module as well. Um, sometimes folks are too shy to ask the facilitator for more resources, so we've decided to include them here to keep it a little more confidential. 
And then I recommend that you point out the participant ahead of time that they do have a section for additional notes that they might want to take throughout the session. And then we also have a color jam because we do recognize at Hub that there are all kinds of ways that people can learn. Um, for me personally, even I find that writing or drawing or coloring while I'm learning something is a great way for me to absorb information. And a lot of people are like that. So we did include um, that just in the back. So welcome to the module. On this first page here, I always recommend sharing with your participants a brief introduction on what they can expect to gain from the module and your facilitator guides uh, provides an excellent introductory paragraph that you can share out loud. And here we have our topics page, and this is where you have a chance to go in a little further in depth with your participants on specific topics that you will be discussing in each section. Um, so you can go through each of the bullet points and clarify with your participants as needed. And we also start the module off by having the participants engage in a check-in or in a say, discussion question. So as a facilitator, you can prompt your participants to share one thing that they're really proud of. And I feel it's a really great way to start off the session on a positive note. However, in my experience, there are usually some participants that are reluctant to share in the beginning. So if that's the case, I would recommend you share first and then uh, prompting the participants to share in a circle format. Here we have the participants set ground rules for the program on our rules of engagement page. So this is a good time to reflect with your participants on how we keep the space safe and enjoyable for everyone. So if you select the let's brainstorm button, you're able to type in the answers that your participants give you in the um, input boxes here. Um, and if people aren't engaging, we do have a, a suggestions uh, page that you can access by pressing the light bulb icon at the top right corner here. And these suggestions usually get the ball rolling. Um, participants usually come up with more after reading out the suggestions. And if there isn't a rule, or sorry, if there is a rule that your participants come with that isn't on the list, you can encourage them to share it out loud. And from there, we'll dive into our first topic on exploring emotions. So firstly, we are introduced to journal moments, and these really prompt the user to reflect on the content that they're learning as they go along. Um, you will see a handful of these throughout each hub module, and participants will be writing the answers to their reflections in their journal. And you'll have all of the instructions on how to um, explain this activity to the participants. Great, so now we explain to folks that it is easy to label certain emotions as bad. So we use coping mechanisms to either bury the feelings deep inside of us or deal with them in unhealthy ways. So we also encourage a more positive perspective when it comes to emotions and labeling them as easy to feel or difficult to feel um, rather than labeling them just as good or bad. 
We also want to encourage that emotions have a purpose. They are natural and even the difficult to feel emotions serve a purpose. Just as a reminder, your facilitator guide includes that script that will give you some additional dialect uh, discussion questions, activities that pair well with each page. All of our modules include some wonderful visuals and they're all very interactive. So whether you're sitting beside your client in a one-on-one -on -one session, or maybe you're sharing your screen for digital learning, there are resources that you can click on to get some more information. So in this case, we can select um, some three different ways that emotions help us in our daily lives. And you can select a card and get a little bit more information on each topic. Great, so we have another journal moment here. And then we can explain that it's natural to sometimes feel ashamed of different difficult emotions because we have all had different experiences in life that may lead us to believe emotions can be bad or shouldn't be expressed. But when we realize that difficult emotions have a purpose, we can see the positive impacts that they have on our lives. The facilitator guide prompts a discussion for this page. Uh, you can ask, what are some other ways we can view difficult to feel emotions more positively? Also, as a facilitator, you can make informed decisions on discussion questions that you would like to ask that aren't in the facilitator guide um, that you would maybe see as beneficial. So modules are also interactive in the sense that they include a lot of participation amongst the people joining you, um, whether there is one participant or many. So um, in this case, we'll share with one another some reflection questions based on the learning that they've gone through so far. And you can remind participants that they're free to pass if they don't feel comfortable sharing out loud. Um, they have options to write or draw their answers to these in their journal as well. So I'm going to jump ahead slightly so that I can share some more about the module and um, in the bottom center console here, if you would like to access um, different pages at any point, you can go forwards or backwards and while you're in the module, any information that you have um, typed in will be saved unless you actually close the module. So you have a lot of flexibility to move around if you need to. Uh, but here we have our recognizing emotions activity. And I think this is a great activity because it's a visual aid that goes hand in hand with the content. So essentially we will have um, someone displaying an emotion on the screen and then participants are able to share what at a time, um, which emotion they this person is exhibiting. And there's no right or wrong answers for this. So instead, we just um, encourage participants to discuss why or why not they think that um, this person is exhibiting a specific emotion. Oh, and I'll also mention um, for this, you can select this little arrow on the right hand to um, access a list of emotions, but also you can type them in here.
Great, so let's take a look at how emotions can be felt in the body. So we're all different, but some people feel emotions in the body the same way. Participants will be asked on the page to name an emotion that usually causes a physical response in their body. And then they're asked what happens to your body when you're nervous, happy, or scared. And we do have some examples up on the screen here. If we select these buttons, we have some very common sensations that people feel when experiencing certain emotions in the body. So when we pay attention to the body, it's easier to identify what the emotion is, why we're having it, and how easy or difficult it is to feel. This is somewhat of a segue page into the next module in the series that will soon be released. Um, but I will mention that all of Hub's modules are designed to be completed as standalone modules as well. So whether or not you want to do one in the series or all in the series, it's totally up to you. And then in our newest modules, we always include a take home activity at the end of the session. So you might remember this activity is located in the journal, which is where um, folks will complete the activity on their own time after they bring it home. And in this specific case, participants can further reflect on their learning on emotions in the body by choosing colors that represent certain emotions and then drawing where they feel them in the body. And then we conclude with a sharing circle. And this is sort of a uh, closing to the session where um, participants can share one emotion that they're currently feeling and where they feel it in the body.